Okay, so I'm going now to show you how to use the software uh, associated to the Olympus microscope. So for that you would first need to log onto your session using your username and password. So then you can find the software in uh, all programs. Uh, it's called CellSense Standard and the software is this one, CellSense Standard. So you can open it. And that's the first screen that you will see on the software. So to uh, observe your sample initially, you need to press live so that uh, you will have the live sample going to the objective. So that's the live sample. You can see that here the image is a bit dark. So uh, you can uh, change a bit the intensity. So again, two ways to do that. Either you change intensity on the microscope or here you can change the settings of the camera and especially you can change the exposure time to increase the exposure time and have a better brightness on the sample. Uh, then you need to choose which objective you're working with. So here we're working for the 4, but if you're working with another uh, objective like the 20, you have to click and the scale bar will automatically uh, change. And the exposure time is also a bit different. So let's go back now to the 10. And you will have so the uh, scale bar on the image. Then you need to do a white balance to make sure that the background is uh, the right color. So for that, you go to this which is called the white balance. You click on that and then you select an area that is not the sample, that is a background that you know should be white. And that makes the white balance. And then here you have the right color uh, of the sample. And then you can capture the image by just pressing snapshot here. And the image will be acquired. It will ask you again whether you're sure that the uh, image was captured with the 10x uh, objective, which is yes here. So you can press OK. The image is not saved for now and you see there is a little asterisk star here that means that the image is not saved so you would have to save it so you can right click on image and save uh, or go to file save or save as and then you just need to select where you want to save it so which location you want to save it and then you go back to live uh, if you want to see again your image and here it's moving as you move the sample. You can change the resolution, I guess, of the image or the snapshot uh, for, yeah, for the movie or for the snapshot if you want to have a lower, res lower resolution. And that's it to acquire images. So if you want to acquire a live movie of uh, your uh, sample, you can tick here the box movie recording and then um, by pressing movie here, it will start recording a movie uh, until you stop the acquisition. Uh, so to stop, you just repress movie. Uh, these movies are usually very, very big files. So if you have a process that is much longer and not very fast, you may want to acquire multi-time images rather than movies. So for that, you need to go to the second tab here, which is called Process Manager. Uh, and here uh, appears the second tab. And you, if you select the automatic process, uh, there is a, a watch here. You click on that and that uh, will appear the settings of the time-lapse acquisition. So you can record, for example, here for uh, half an hour, um, every uh, 10 seconds, which means 186 images. And then when you press start, it will then acquire all these images um, uh, automatically. So if we do a time-lapse acquisition uh, here at the, at the bottom here, you will see the number of frames that have been acquired and the time remaining. So here we have, for example, two frames, you can stop it. And this file will be saved as a .vsi file, which can only be opened with this software. But now if you want to save all the images individually to open them with another program like ImageJ, you can go here, click on the tile view. So here you will see all your images. You can select them all and then just file save as and save them as uh, image stack, uh, single images, all the stacks on the same folder. Uh, this file, so the movies or the time-lapse sequences are uh, saved automatically in your picture folder. So if you want to save them somewhere else, uh, well, you either save them as or remember to move them from the picture to a, another specific folder. There are other uh, type of processes that you can use. If you have, for example, a very thick sample, so you can't really find easily the focus of the sample because it has multiple uh, uh, plane that can be focused on. You can go to this manual process and choose the first one, Instant EFI. L let's go back here live on the sample. If you do that, then you can change the focus gradually uh, on uh, the microscope and the software will automatically collapse all the images at the different focal planes on a single 2D image. So it's like, it's not like a 3D stack, but it's just collapsing uh, the 2D view at different focal planes. So if you start that and if you change the focus, uh, slowly, um, 
this is is going to be the final image that will be the collapsed image this is the image live image you can see it now it's blurry so you're out of focus and this is just a representation of the uh, all the points that are in focus so if you change gradually to be more and more in focus you will see that this one is less blurry because uh, all the focal planes are now collapsed on the same one and then you can stop and then you have a final image that is less blurry than the initial one because all the uh, thickness has been collapsed onto the same plane. Uh, you can also acquire larger images with a high resolution by uh, um, tiling multiple images uh, on the same sample. So for example here we can see we have a sample that uh, continues uh, uh, below here the field of view. So to do that you choose this one and then um, you can start it will acquire this first image of course you would have to focus on the image so it will acquire the first image and then uh, you can tell him okay i want the next image to be below so then i can have um, the full the full sample so you click on the arrow here below and you will see that two images now appear the top one is the one you just acquired the, the bottom one is the live image so if you move now the sample stage uh, so that in the uh, overlapping region here this image overlaps with the first image that you acquire like this a bit yeah here it's overlapping then you can uh, either stop or continue if you want to go now on this side because the sample goes on this side so let's go on this side now you have this first image that has been overlap and then on this again intermediate region you would try to overlap the two images yes and then you can stop and then the, you, have, you can have the final image that has high resolution because you use this uh, high magnification but you have uh, tiled all your images so you can observe a bigger sample. Again this uh, will be saved as a .vsi file so if you want to save it as a T4 PNG you just go to save as and then you can select in the list which uh, PNG or T file you want to save. One thing is that when you save the images so all the images that you've acquired all or this VSI file you can save them in different formats. It could be G, JPEG, it could be PNG, it could be TIFF. TIFF format is usually the best format because it will retain all the information of your file. But TIFF images may uh, have a problem uh, when you want to look at them using normal software like just the Windows uh, imaging uh, software um, and not more advanced software like ImageA in the sense that they will uh, appear the first time that you use the software and the first time you acquire the images, they will appear black, dark. That's because the images have 12 bits instead of 8 and so Windows doesn't really understand um, how to read the image. If you use more advanced program like ImageE, it will open them correctly, but if you want to have just a quick look on the image on uh, this uh, Windows image program, uh, you need to change the settings in which the image is saved. We, we generally don't need 12 bits on the image, we need only 8 bits. So for that, uh, you need to go on the camera uh, acquisition settings here. Uh, and that you only have to do that once when you open for the first time the software and then you go to camera you go to general here and here the bit depth that you want to select instead of having 12 bit rgb color you select 8 bit rgb color and then you just press ok and that will uh, keep these settings next time you open the software so now it's going to save the image even if you save that in t format um, with only 8 bits so you will be able to uh, open them with any program and you should see them uh, nicely and not just black. I've just shown you uh, how to use the microscope so this is how you can uh, acquire your images um, so um, put your sample, acquire images and observe also biofringent sample with cross polarizer. Uh, general remarks to conclude I would suggest that the first time that you use the software, don't forget to go in the camera settings so that uh, you can change the acquisition settings and you can then save the images in 8-bit formats and you can save them as TIFF and they will appear uh, nicely. That's the first thing you should do on the software. Uh, then uh, other general remarks. When you're done, uh, you should uh, close the software, save all the images you want to keep. Uh, turn off the uh, um, power on the microscope. Remember to do that. Clean all the area. Uh, uh, so remove all your sample, uh, throw them away uh, and close the dust-free box. Uh, I uh, would also recommend of course not to touch the uh, objective pieces with your fingers and uh, if there is, has been any issue like spillage let uh, the person that is in charge of the microscope know so they can clean uh, the, the objectives uh, as it should be done.
Now you know all about uh, acquiring images uh, on the Olympus microscope and acquiring, uh, um, observing also biorefringent samples. Yes. Thanks for watching the video and work safely.